Today, House Republicans follow through on at least some promises. Uh, Joe Biden caught with classified documents. Oops. And the Biden administration uh, debates banning gas stoves. Always on the pulse of what matters in America. We've got all of that and more coming up, and it all starts right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez and I am joined today by Yaku Bullions, Belize TV contributor and of course host of The Bottom Line, who by the way has a new video out with PragerU that I would encourage everyone to go see. It's just phenomenally done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, appreciate great it. job. Yeah, we appreciate it. with PragerU, much respect to Dennis and Marissa Strait at PragerU. They do a a great job. Yeah, it was wonderful. Uh, also joined by Daniel Greer, political strategist, and it is his first time on the show. Thanks for having me. No pressure, just don't screw it up. All righty. <laughs> uh, we're glad you're here. Um, so I want to get to the, uh, look, we've been talking, obviously, late last week through, you know, yesterday and here today about all of what's going on, the, the Speaker of the House saga. So uh, last time we left you, of course, Kevin McCarthy had finally gotten that 15th vote to become Speaker of the House, uh, some holdouts voting present rather than voting for him. And there was, of course, some concessions within that. Um, so at least some of the promises. I don't know how much difference they're going to make when you talk about the House voting on something and then sending it over to the Senate where it's probably likely to die. But uh, some promises made, promises kept. The House Republicans voted uh, Monday evening to cut billions of dollars to the IRS after the agency, of course, received a really significant boost in funding in the Democrats' Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, and Kevin McCarthy hailed the passage of the bill by a 221 to 210 vote. Obviously, every Democrat voted against it. I don't think that would come as any su as a surprise to anyone. And this was their promise to repeal the 87,000 IRS agents, which, of course, they did uh, by voting to strip that $71 billion from the funds, which was, of course, slotted to add those agents. But again, that bill unlikely to pass in the Senate. So, uh, you know. Same with term limits. It's like, great, I'm glad you guys are, are going to bring it to the floor for a debate and a vote, but are these people going to vote to strip power from themselves? I don't think so. Uh, House Republicans are also slated to vote on a bill that would abolish the IRS uh, and eliminate the national personal and corporate income taxes and replace them with a national sales tax. It also gets rid, the bill would get rid of uh, the death, gift, and payroll taxes, and it would replace the current tax code with a national consumption tax. And uh, this vote, again, was part of the deal that was made. You know, all of those, the, the, the Taliban 20, as the mainstream media called them, even Sean Hannity was over there lambasting Lauren Boebert for standing strong and, and holding out. I texted her last Last night, I wanted to wait until all of this blew over. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, thank you yeah. so much. You're not going to hear it from the, the mainstream media members, right? You're not going to hear it from them. So please hear it from me. Thank you so much for all that you did. Stay strong because we need you. Um, so look, all of these, you know, they're, they're following through on these promises. But again, I just... Maybe, am I too pessimistic? No. I just no. don't see anything happening. Again! amazing work done by yeah. the holdouts because there were yeah. too many people who were like, oh, well, we have to, we're part of the party. We have to vote uh, party lines. We have to vote for Kevin McCarthy because he's the guy. It's like, well, no, that's not the way any of this is supposed to work. We're not supposed to be in lockstep just because you say so. That's kind of the whole point um, is mm -hmm. to not be in lockstep and to have this healthy dialogue and to have some concessions. Um, but, uh, but I mean, you know, I'm just going to give some some tepid, like, Okay, you did. You followed through on these things, but now I want to see some more change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, actually, those twenty is what we would like the whole house to look Absolutely. like. Absolutely, where you vote your conscience. Well, and, and they're and, supposed and your, to be conflict. And your faith, and, and conf of course. Yeah. Of course, we don't, we, we shouldn't groupthink. Right. We don't want to groupthink. What have they been doing for the last two, three and a half years? Don't think. Right. Fauci will tell you how to mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. we, we forfeit your right, not just for freedom of speech, but to think. Mm -hmm. Listen, Lauren Boebert, I met her on this show. They said, she surprised me. Lauren stood strong. Mary Miller, champion, stood strong. Mm -hmm. Roy, Jordan, it's amazing. That's what the house should be. But think back to when Trump was in office 
and we had the Senate and they had the House. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And they couldn't get things through because we blocked it at the Senate. Mm -hmm. Now, they can make your life difficult. They impeached him twice. Right. Not that I think we should impeach him because then we get Kamala maybe. But, but again, <laughs> I don't think much results into ultimate action because they'll just stop it at the Senate. Right. What should happen now is the 20 should go to work on 20 in the Senate. They mm -hmm. should go to work on flipping people in the, in the GOP and saying, this Look is what the we got done. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the start. You have to yes. have a beginning. You don't yeah. start, uh, you don't make it to your end goal without starting here. Right. You haven't seen this before. You haven't even seen this from the Democrats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had a fit and a start at it with the squad, but even they weren't as successful as these patriots in the 20. Uh, but to, the, to, you know, to your point about those votes, they're a fear, fear, it's a hollow victory yeah. uh, because... Uh, what have we seen before with Obamacare? Hey, we'll do these votes, we'll do these show votes. Right. And then when we get the presidency, the Senate, and the House, what do we prioritize? Mm -hmm. We don't prioritize that. But the 20 is a, a key component to that. So I think you can be optimistic. Yeah, yeah. and I, I feel like it at least puts, um, it puts these politicians on record, right? Yeah. Like, one, uh, take the term limits uh, vote, for instance. I, I, I want to see, I think all of America yes. should want to yes. see, who is going to vote for term limits, yes. which in my opinion, would be the healthiest mm. thing for the country, right? And who is going to vote against, uh, you know, taking power away from themselves? I think put them on record. Let them, let them, uh, let them go the on record fall, with that. That's right? That's when you really see what the motive truly is. Am I really here to serve the people? It's just ironic. Mary Miller, Chris Miller, her husband, serves on, on the state house. He's a farmer. I've been in their home. I've been on the property. She's a farm. She, several children, grandmother, I mean, just a work. There's Lauren Boebert, just a mm -hmm. mom mm -hmm. who at a rally said, hey, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to keep my guns. So it's, it's, the, it's the heart of the matter and the person that's being revealed. Some truly want to save this nation and represent the voice of the people, and some don't. And I'm with you. Let's bring these votes out. De declare yourself. Mm -hmm. let's, let's vote on term limits, and then we'll see. Right. And you're going to see the usual suspects, but I'm, I'm, your point is so strong. You've got to start somewhere, and it's actually a strong start if you look yeah. at it from yeah. that perspective. Yeah. 20, they went deep now. Right. They went into deep waters. Right. Mm -hmm. 15 votes deep. Yeah. Yeah. Hadn't been in 100 years. That's actually a strong start. I just want them to, to keep now, meet as a group, and go to work. Right. Flip more. But also work on the, on the same. Well, yeah, and then aside from the votes on the floor, you have all of the extracurricular stuff that they're going right. to be doing in terms mm -hmm. of the investigations. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. Well, and um, just to kind of add to that, I know that they uh, they they passed the rules package um, that would allow they're not doing the the proxy voting anymore, right? You mm -hmm. got to be there in person to be able to vote. Um, so just holding them accountable, more accountable, I think is, is really going to maybe put these people, put these members uh, kind of in check that like, hey, that old way that you guys were doing things, that old gross swampy way that you guys were doing things, we're not gonna do anymore. And look, I don't trust Kevin McCarthy uh, for squat. I, we played a video clip of him yesterday when he was accepting his, mm -hmm. Like, how embarrassing does it have to be when you have to go through all of that and win on the 15th vote and still give a victory speech? But, um, but he's, he's, he's giving his speech and he's like, we will hold the swamp accountable. And I'm like, I don't really know that the swamp can hold the swamp accountable because I don't trust you. But at least he is put on notice by all of these other mm. members that, no, we're going to hold your feet to the fire. And if nothing else, it's going to be a media just yeah. lambasting for you because you don't want to look, you know, the optics of your own party coming after you. You don't want. But Sarah, things are shifting, yeah. though. Dan Crenshaw lost the chairman's seat for, for, for a national security. You know, yeah. on, on, so things are Things are happening in there, man. I mean, they've, they've flipped some tables over. It's good. Yeah, the last week, the, the 20 looked like they were on the front foot, and everyone else, the 200 looked like they were on the back foot. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a losing setup in the end, I like the look of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally agree. Um, what, I want to go back to the, the IRS, uh, the, the vote that they are slated to do on uh, abolishing you know, the IRS and yes. getting rid of all of these taxes. I, I mean, uh, yeah, obviously the Fair Tax Act, I'm, I'm all for all of those things, but does it even stand a chance? Well, it's gotta go through the Senate, right? So, right, so, so that's why I'm like, I don't, I mean, these but people again, just when voted. Last, but, but again, legitimately, when last did we hear actually a strong group mm -hmm. bringing this issue to the table going, maybe we should get rid of the IRS. 
You haven't heard that. Right. Just like Roe v. Wade. Right. You just don't hear it, and then you start hearing it, and man, this thing picks up momentum. I'm all for abolishing the IRS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think this is good. It could yeah, pick I up steam. if there's not a shift in the population uh, going to a gig economy and they're having to interface with the IRS in ways they never did before, mm -hmm. where they get their W-2 for their employer, mm -hmm. they just send it through TurboTax and they're done. Now maybe you're having to sit down and do your taxes and you're like, wait a minute, they're taking yes. what from me? Yeah. Yes. I'm interested to see what that looks like. Yeah. Some realization. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, good and point. I, I would love it. I always say I would love it if we would just move to, just stop the payroll deductions. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a 1099, right? Like I, I have to write a check yep. to the government yes. so every you know, quarter. You and, know, you oh feel my it, you see God, it. God, it makes but me But most sick. don't though. They don't know, they don't out see Out of sight, it. out of mind. And it's just, a, you know, they see it a little bit at a time coming yeah. out of each check that they get bi-weekly or whatever, and they don't realize, even if you're, you know, even if you're in the, the, the tax bracket where you're not making as much as you wanna make, it would still make them sick, I feel like, to understand mm -hmm. how much money they are giving away in every paycheck and where it's going. It's mm -hmm. like you're paying for, like, you know, uh, experiments on monkeys in the Sudan to, like, try to turn them gay or something, you know? I mean, it, I, I just, I wish that people understood how much they were actually paying. But look what happened yeah. when they saw it at the pump. <sighs> Ooh. Yeah. When they physically saw it at yeah. the pump and you couldn't shimmy your way around it. Yeah. Biden couldn't trick it. It's there. Right. Twice a week, three times a week, it's there. And they felt it and they started talking. I'm with you on this. Yeah. And the eggs. Yes, the that's eggs. what I was going to say. Yes, yes, come yes, on. No, no it's, 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 <laughs> and it's And if you pay. can, you're paying $10 for a dozen. Right, right, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Heck, we even had, who was it? It wasn't Nicki Minaj, it was Cardi B, right? Even Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> Cardi B came out and said, my lettuce was $2, now it's 4 But But still, that's the point, though. The system was almost mm -hmm. designed that it's, Mm -hmm. You think of it once when you get your job, and then you never think of it again, and yep. you just work with the little nest egg you get. But if you're 1099 or the gig economy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're going to see it. Mm -hmm. You're going to write the check. You're going to you see the chunk in a lump sum, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to not feel so good. Yeah, so I'm just I saying, understand. if we want to do baby steps, like just try to get rid of the payroll deduction and make mm -hmm. Americans be more accountable for writing that actual check and it will make them sick so quickly. They'll be like, Abo all of it, abolish all of it, abolish the IRS, Tax taxation is theft. They will be on this bandwagon. You mean we like won't, we won't just sign off on 90 billion to the Ukraine? Like billions and trillions and... Well, Yaku, it's okay, we can just print more. Oh. What could possibly go wrong? We'll just... Print Printing is more. not the problem. It's where it goes after you print it. That's the problem. No one's tracking this oh stuff. Oh, my gosh. I know. Um, all right. We, uh, let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we will be back with more. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Bank on Yourself. So, uh, look, we're talking about all of this payroll deduction and stuff. You've been brainwashed into thinking that payroll deduction is the way. You've also been brainwashed into believing that the only way to, uh, to grow all of your you know, retirement is to risk it in the stock market. That is not true. You can reach your financial goals and dreams without taking any unnecessary risks, and you can do that with Bank on Yourself. It is a better way to grow and protect your hard-earned money. This is a retirement plan alternative, and it's never had a losing year in over 160 years. I would call that a good track record. It is tax-free retirement income. You will know what your tax rate will be in retirement. That is zero under current tax law, which is going to protect you from the coming tax tsunami that we keep talking about. You are going to be in control. You get access to your money for any purpose with no questions act, asked, and the government is not going to penalize. You know, with 401ks and all this, they, they penalize like how much you can take, and when you take it, you get a penalty if you're not a certain age and all of that. It's not going to be like that. They've got built-in inflation protection, uh, and you've got uh, guaranteed to, uh, to have a winning year in both good times and bad. You can get a free report with all the details on how the Bank on Yourself strategy adds guarantees, predictability, and control to your financial plan. You can go to bankonyourself.com slash matters. That is bankonyourself.com slash matters. Attorney General Merrick Garland has assigned the U.S. attorney in Chicago to review documents marked classified that were found at, uh, wait, does this say mar a -Lo No, it doesn't. It says the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement in Washington. These are 10 documents from President Biden's vice presidential office at the center. And uh, the FBI is also involved in the U.S. attorney's inquiry. So 
Uh, apparently, according to the, the reporting as it stands now, the material was identified for personal attorneys uh, for Biden on November 2nd, just before the midterm elections. And they say that uh, he had, they were packing files that were housed in a locked closet a locked closet. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. To vacate, uh, prepare pr to prepare to vacate office space at the Mar uh, no Penn Biden Center in Washington D.C. Uh, and it was contained in a folder that was in a box with other unclassified papers. This is sounding like God. I'm, get I'm getting. I feel deja vu. Does anyone feel just like? I feel like I've heard this story before, except it's being covered much differently. So that's interesting. Oh wait. Um, it also. Uh, apparently, the, the documents contain at least 10 classified documents, including U.S. intelligence memos and briefing materials that covered topics including <coughs> Ukraine, uh, Iran, and the United Kingdom. But I'm sure that's, that's not a big deal. Also, he was a vice president, not president, so he didn't have the ability to declassify any sort of documents. Um, but I want to play for you. Gentlemen, I want to get your thoughts on this. But I just I want to play for you here. Back in September... Joe Biden uh, gave 60 Minutes his response to the reports of classified documents that were found at Mar-a-Lago when we were talking about Donald Trump. Here is his response then. Watch. You saw the photograph of the top secret documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago. What did you think to yourself looking at that image? How that could possibly happen. How one, anyone could be that irresponsible. Mm. And I thought... What data was in there that may compromise sources and methods? By that, I mean names of people who helped, or et cetera. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, totally irresponsible. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, interesting. He's singing a, a different tune today uh, while in Mexico. At the end of a meeting, a reporter asked him about the classified documents, and uh, he conveniently, well, I don't know, maybe he just didn't hear him much. Agradecemos a, President, you have a response to the leak agradecemos a los medios su, about the classified documents, and he, I mean, look, Joe Biden has plausible deniability at this point because you never know, like, does he know where he is at any given time? Perhaps he didn't hear him, uh, but I have to imagine he's not going to be very forthcoming about why he took documents related to Ukraine, specifically. Mm -hmm. How deep do we have to dig really to get that answer, I wonder. Can we just play the whole, the whole clip where SWAT goes into his house? Oh, that didn't happen. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, at least he, well, listen, he didn't have any classified sure? documents that contained nuclear secrets. Because, I mean, the FBI is consistent. Are you sure, though? Right, well. They didn't go in, tell his lawyers they can't come in, mm -hmm. raided the home, took some of his wife's belongings. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? His son's. Um, yeah, no, we, no yeah, that didn't right. happen. That's right. No, that the hypocrisy happen. is so thick. Mm. Look, uh, I don't trust Garland. Right. As far as I can throw this table. Uh, but let's see what happens here. Maybe, maybe the world will look at him a little differently. But this is going to be a much like, I think, the Hunter laptop, where it'll be much of nothing. And then maybe two years after his presidency, oh, yeah, yeah, it was actually. Secret Service documents, and mm -hmm. yes, it was about Ukraine, and and yes, Zelensky was implicated, and and yes, Ukraine laundered money for the world mm -hmm. for so long, mm -hmm. but that's in the past, right. like the laptop. <laughs> right, right. Well, just like all of the other uh, government important, I would say, government documents that seem to be barred from being released publicly for like seventy-five years at a time, right. so that once they finally are able to release them, it's like, oh, well, nobody cares anymore. Oh, the CIA uh, knew certain things about JFK's Oh, well, that's in the past. Who cares about it now? Right, yeah. Now, that's the first time I'd seen that 60 Minutes interview, and him talking about names on the floor. I have a memory that goes back to the summer of last year when we're leaving Afghanistan. Those names are there, those people are there, mm -hmm. and those people right. are in trouble, mm -hmm. or possibly dead. Mm -hmm. All our informants mm -hmm. yeah. left How behind. much more? I mean, that is way, mm -hmm. way worse right. than some documents in a box 
in a closet. Right, right. Well, which, again, you know, they try to uh, to sully Trump's reputation as much as they can by throwing out these, like, well, it could have contained nuclear secrets. Well, I, that's already been debunked. So and then it didn't. It didn't, right. Sure. That's what I'm saying. That was the report at the time. But as they know, which they do it on purpose, is that they know that the, fir- the initial report will get all of the traction. And then if you come out and, and issue a correction, which sometimes they just don't. They don't issue the correction, even though they know that it's been debunked. But the correction doesn't get near as much traction as the initial, like, oh, well, we we don't know. It could contain nuclear secrets. Who's to say? Because the, this generation of reporting, it's like, well, prove to me that this didn't happen. Sure. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to posit that it happened, and yeah. you prove to me that it didn't. Exactly. That seems to be the case. but uh, and, it's, and what Joe's saying there is he's like, look, our people could have been in danger. Uh, and <laughs> right. it's often, I mean, so often the case that these politicians will tell you exactly what they've done, yeah. which is, these were our people. We put them in danger. But we're going to say that Trump did right, this. Right, right, right. 100% didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. It's projection. Oh, 100% it's a, projection. It's a confession. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so I want to uh, I want to switch here to the 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 talk of the ban on gas stoves. Because as, as I mentioned before, I mean, you talk about all of the problems that America is facing right now. You talk about inflation. You talk about, you know, uh, people struggling to fill up their cars at the gas pump. You talk about not being able to find eggs at the grocery store. And when you can, you can't afford them. Um, well, the Biden administration, in spite of all of those challenges, has decided to, uh, to weigh whether or not they want to enforce a nationwide ban on gas-burning stoves following a new study that they, they say the appliances emit harmful pollution that has been linked to asthma in children, and they emit unsafe levels of nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, and particulate matter, um, which, you know, they, the environment is everything to the left. And so if it's bad for the environment, uh, we got to get rid of it. We got to ban all of the things is why they have to push for electric cars, which, by the way, doesn't solve the problems that they think that it solves. But I digress. Uh, approximately 35% of homes in the United States sure. use gas stoves. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the way, uh, the, the let's see, the, the Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey and Representative Don Bayer of Virginia requested that uh, the government take action against gas stove emissions, saying that the appliances were a cumulative burden that disproportionately impacts minority and low-income households because it always comes back to race. Gas gas stoves are racist. Always race, Mm -hmm. but also you have to villainize the cleanest burning fuel we have, Mm -hmm. natural gas. Mm -hmm. It is the cleanest burning fuel. So you have to, if you're going to go after the oil and gas industry, They've gone after oil. Of course they're going to go after gas. And so what do you slap on gas? Racism. Yeah. Got to talk racism and for the, sure. And the environment. It's just funny that even my house included with all my CO2 sensors, no Doesn't sensor ever mm. goes off. It's so bizarre. Mm. <laughs> and I have a ga- I, we have gas. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, though. Very. Right? I didn't see it in this reporting, but are they going to come back and buy stoves for everybody who's affected by it? It's a great point. I don't know. Uh, and then the timing is really suspect, too. I mean, Cory Booker comes out and does this win right after they lose a the house. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to kick this to an agency, which is, it's the playbook. We're yeah. going to go to the agencies the and we're going to have them do it. Right. It's yeah. the playbook. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. No, that's a great, it's one of the first things that I thought of was like, okay, so you ban it. What do you, uh, the, the, typically with, with the Biden administration, it comes in the form of a tax credit, right? So yeah. they're like, well, just like with the Inflation Reduction Act, they're like, well, we're going to give you a tax credit to get all of that, you know, solar green energy stuff for your house. And it's going to cost you like $20,000, but mm-hmm. we'll give you a tax credit for like 1500 So you'll be golden, especially in this economy. What, you can't afford that? Oh, well, I mean, I guess tough. Yeah, but we're not going to talk about installations. Who's going right. to come out because the trade industry right. is dead. right. Right. Okay, they killed it. Right. Right. May that be revived. So well, also, it's like electric cars abolish gas. Okay, where's the where's the charging stations? Yeah. Oh, it'll take us forty five years to put up charging stations. It's 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 insanity, and if we give it any merit or any credit, we are just part of that group think. No, it's insanity. Yeah. They're not getting rid of gas stoves, because people won't eat. People won't have heat. People will die. Well, I they mean, can't replace it. Don't worry. I'm sure you can find an electric stove that was made in China. So, but that stove congrats. has to be wired. Yeah. In the house. Yeah. 
Yeah. Who's doing that? No, no, no. I, I, I agree with you. I know. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But just ban all the things. Yeah, all right. ban it all. Got it. Got it. Uh, all right. We want to, uh, we got to take another quick break. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Grove Collaborative. So uh, did you know that only 9% of plastic actually gets recycled, no matter how much we put in our recycling bin? At Grove Collaborative, they believe it's time to ditch single-use plastics for good. They create and curate everything you need for a sustainable home. Uh, and look, if you maybe maybe it's not the environment that you're you're particularly concerned about. Maybe it is the fact that you want to use products in your house that are safe for your family, that are safe for your pets. I've got I've got kids. I've got all sorts of animals. We have a lizard. I got a lot to consider, okay, when I'm cleaning my house and I know that when I go to Grove, it is going to be something that is is green, that my kids can withstand, that all of my pet, my zoo at home can withstand, and you can do that at Grove. Plus, you're going to find the same brands that you find at like Whole Foods, but you're going to save a ton of money. And with every first order over at Grove, they're going to set you up with a free 60-day VIP trial, which includes unlimited free shipping, seasonal gifts, and early access to ex- exclusive sales. You can join over 2 million households shopping sustainable at Grove. Go to grove.com slash news today to get a free starter set plus free shipping with your first order. That is grove.com slash news. The American Academy of Pediatrics published new guidelines yesterday highlighting that childhood obesity can sometimes and should be uh, treated with medication and mm-hmm. surgery. This is an executive summary of uh, the guidance that was no- that noted that pediatricians and other primary health care providers should offer children 12 years old and up who are obese medication for weight loss. It also said they should offer referrals for teenagers who are 13 or older and have severe obesity to be evaluated for metabolic and bariatric surgery. Uh, these are the f- this is the first comprehensive outline that we have gotten from the AAP in 15 years. And unshockingly, it is another example of the fact that the medical industrial complex is just all in it for the money. Mm-hmm. They are the, the medical community that you once knew and wanted to trust uh. to give you good information is dead and gone. I could probably make the argument that it never actually fully existed. It was just kind of a, you know, the the facade of one. But it does feel a whole lot like these providers now are just like really anxious to 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 cut up children. Uh, I'm, I'm just yeah. going to say it like they they want to they want to cut them up when they're in the womb. They want to pierce their brain and suck them out through a vacuum. They want to chop off their genitals uh, once they confuse them when they're kids. Right. And now right. here they are. They don't want to they don't want to tell the parents, listen, stop shoving yes. toxic food and junk in your child's mouth and actually teach them to tell them to get off the Xbox and go outside. No, <laughs> don't tell the parents that. Just cut them up again. It's fine. Well, it's all fine. St- it's totally done a pretty good job of nixing that go outside bit because they're like, hey, I send my kids outside or down the block and oh, maybe there's going to be a phone call and I'm going to have somebody knocking on my door. Yeah. Now, my wife saw this yesterday and she absolutely lost it. She Did said, she lose can it? you believe yeah. what they're trying to do? I said, well, look, I mean, if you look at the past, I don't know, 20 plus years of the way that they've been getting people ready for yep. like, hey, your kid is really energy. Re- he's really energetic. Yep. Let's give him some pills for that mm-hmm. and calm him right down. Mm-hmm. Hey, your and this is, I think, the inevitable, like, this is the outcome. This is where we end up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Well, I mean, there's no money in actually solving the problem, right? There's no there's, money in healthy people. There's no money in you being Bingo. healthy and fit. <laughs> there's no money in that. So why would they want to tell you to actually live a healthy lifestyle when they can tell you, well, you're going to keep writing this check every month for your prescription. Well, you're going to have a lot of follow-up appointments for that bariatric surgery at 13. Shh. Don't tell them about diet and exercise. We'll keep that our little secret. Hey, we had Governor Cuomo tell you you'll get a free burger if you take the COVID shot. Mm. I mean, they're incentivizing mm. yeah. you. Look, th- this is, we are at the precipice of being labeled the, the world's worst parents. Okay, pacifying your kid by shoving food down their face or you as a parent setting a horrible example, mm-hmm. shoving food down your face. Get your kid outside. Here's your script. Here's your medication. Two hours of running. Run that kid until he can't, trust me, he's going to meet Jesus and he's going to sleep well. You run that kid, you run it off, you eat healthy, eat less, smaller portions, stop pacifying yourself with food, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Stop feeling yourself into obesity because you eat your feelings. 
Uh, but it's insanity, and it's a it's a wave, Sarah. It's mm -hmm. everywhere, though. Yeah. It's not from one agency. It's the WHO and the HHS, and, and it's schools and counselors at schools. I mean, it's just this movement towards pharma. Yeah. It's pharma. Yeah. Which is why, this may not be popular here, I was so against our former president declaring a national mm -hmm. emergency mm -hmm. and accelerating a vaccine program mm -hmm. because this is the... You open a door that... Satan himself gets a wedge in, and mm -hmm. evil just said, you're not going to shut that one for a while. Yeah. And in now bariatric surgery. Because it's fear. Mm -hmm. Of course. I mean, and every, I mean, parents are afraid. They, they want their kids to be healthy. They want their kids to be happy. They, and they do listen to people like the president, like President Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, if you get this shot, you're, I mean, there's a lot of people that took it, and they've had adverse reactions to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, no, there's... Uh, but there's a lot of fear, a, a lot, the, the devil, the fear, the, yeah. it's, it's all there, and yeah, it's a, a yeah. steady creep, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. end of the wedge. Um, well, another way that uh, they're after your children is, of course, if you watch this program, you're no stranger to hearing these stories, is, of course, in schools, they just, they're just, like, really dying to sexualize your children, which, I don't know, is apparently controversial of me to say, like, hey, we should not do that. You should not sexualize children. And certainly you shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't be funding it in our tax dollars for public schools. But uh, a New York City middle school principal told a concerned parent on Thursday that uh, they have no plans to remove a book from the school's library that contains detailed information about sexual acts. This is uh, Booker T. Washington Middle School principal Alana El Elster that confirmed they have this book. It's called This Book is Gay. And it was stocked in the middle school library, and uh, school officials are not considering its removal. She also seemed to question whether the concerned parent uh, was against exposing her child to people and ideas that are new and different. Is fascinating because, um, look, she said uh, in her email, she said, this is public school, and they're going to continue to be exposed. And I just read that, and I'm like, Yep, that's exactly our point, mm -hmm. is that they should not continue to be exposed in public school. So what the hell is wrong? What are you guys doing in public school that we need to address, right? That's, that's the whole point of our argument. Thank you for creating it for us. This is public school and they're going to continue to be exposed. The fact that you don't see the problem with the sentence that you just uttered mm. is why you have no business being the principal of this middle school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how about we, we understand that the fastest growing form of sex trafficking of children is familial trafficking, which means the mm -hmm. predator is a familial figure, and now you have pedophiles getting teaching degrees. Mm -hmm. So how about we arrest all the pedophiles in public school? How about we go after that sting operation? How about we do that? I think we need to go there and clean that house up yeah. because they're, they're welcoming them right. and they're placating to them. And the 0.04% lobby that wants mm -hmm. to sexualize the kids, the tail's wagging the dog in this country. And maybe it's time for intellectually honest Americans that say, leave the children alone to listen to, and heed the warning and step up for once and say, this is, this is not okay. Yeah. yeah. And not leave it to one mom right. to fight the principal. Right, well, and I mean, you know, it's just all, look, lip service, I would say, because the principal went on to say, like, look, as a parent, you have the right to monitor what your child is reading, so maybe just have a conversation with your kid and tell them what you want them to do. It's like, no. have you ever been around children? No. Do you right. not no. understand that they, yeah. if you give them access to it, and I, as a mom, yeah. say, don't read that book, what is the first thing they're going to do? Gonna they're going to go read yeah. the book, and yeah. you guys know that, which is why you continue to expose them to it. Reverse That's psychology. exactly right, yeah. Um, yeah, no, there's, I think 2020... 2022 was the year of the parent and stuff like this is going to make 2023 and every year hereafter mm -hmm. the year of the parent because mm -hmm. I like to think that this is one of those issues where there's a lot of consensus among parents right left center that are yeah. thinking that's not what they should be doing in school. He doesn't know how to read. He doesn't know how to do math because you kept him at home for two years because yep. of COVID lockdown policies. Just get back to teaching the fundamentals. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Simple. I, 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 I really do. I, be, I agree with you. I, I really do believe that there is going to be a pendulum Has that's to going happen. to swing back because mm -hmm. even all, I mean, even all of the, as you pointed out, there are even left leaning parents who are like, yeah, I'm all for consenting adults. If they want to dress up as a woman and live life as a woman and they still have a penis like that's on them. But don't teach my kid that. 
I, I, I feel yeah. like that is that is going to be like the resonating, uh, you know, battle cry from parents all across the spectrum. I mean, I can only hope. It's going to catch up yeah. with them, Sarah, because even when mom abuses her child, Johnny, and takes him to a drag show mm -hmm. and tells Johnny, you do want to be a boy. Right. And now Johnny's a boy. When Johnny's 15 and he's only reading at a third grade level, mm -hmm. you, can't, you, you can't fake that. Mm -hmm. You can't wish that away. No, I'm not going to decide that I am a reader. Well, read, Johnny. Johnny can't read. Right. So right. At, at some point here, those signs are going to show up that we're an undereducated nation in school level. We are falling way behind, mm -hmm. way, worldwide. We are behind. Uh, and, and so you can't fake that stuff away. Yeah. You know, you can, you can, you know, LBGTQ alphabet explain your way into many things, but not, hey, this 15-year-old can't read. Mm-hmm. So what, some, what happened? But he's trans. It's okay. Right. But he can't read. Right. Right. So that's going to touch every parent. Right? Well, you, you said, a, what did you say, 0.4% of the population? Mm -hmm. I, 0 0.04. Mm -hmm. Well, it's way more now because it's the trendy thing. I, but right? it's not it's, real. But yeah. it's not real. No, of course real. it's not. It's right. not no, a no, conviction. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course <laughs> it's not. I, I don't, don't want to. It's like people walking into church going, I'm a Christian. Show right. me your lifestyle. Right. That, that means nothing to me when you show up Sunday. Right. 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 Okay. It's not a club. Well, but my point is, yes, it it, yes. it is it is point oh four, it I or it was, however you want to yeah. look at it. Yeah. But that's I, I get the it. point, yes. right? That is why they're going into schools and yeah. and pushing this on kids. That is why to they're trying the, to do to all grow ages, the tribe. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's this uh, inflated number yeah. of people who identify as that because they have infiltrated in sure. these communities. Well, they'll they've say infiltrated a third the medical now of community, youth, right? right. Yeah, yeah. They've infiltrated the, the the schools. They've infiltrated these communities, knowing that if they could just push it on them, mm -hmm. they would inflate that number. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay. That's why we see a rise in homeschooling. Yes, exactly, which we, we should. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, Finally, absolutely. people we said, school and it's we're great. done. Yep, we're it's done. Amazing. Um, all right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah, it's like. It's amazing. Um, you guys were sold alive. The latest Twitter files involving the, uh, Twitter's response to the pandemic puts a focus on Dr. Scott Gottlieb. This is a former FDA commissioner and sitting board of a prominent COVID vaccine manufacturer, Pfizer. I would call them infamous. I wouldn't say prominent, I would say the infamous vaccine manufacturer, Pfizer. Uh, Alex Berenson was the one who had the honors of publishing these particular files. And uh, he shared an August 2021 email Gottlieb sent to Twitter's senior public policy manager, Todd O'Boyle, flagging a tweet written by former Trump administration official uh, Dr. Brett Garor, who had written, it's now clear COVID-19 natural immunity is superior to vaccine immunity by a lot. There's no scientific justification for vax proof if a person had prior infection. And so Gottlieb, when he flagged it, told Twitter, this is the kind of stuff that's corrosive. Here he draws a sweeping conclusion off a single retrospective study in Israel that hasn't been peer reviewed, but this tweet will end up going viral and driving news coverage. It hasn't been peer reviewed or studied extensively, sort of like the vaccine that they pushed <laughs> on all of you where there were no long-term studies, but okay, that's fine, doctor. Uh, and let's see, the O'Boyle, oh he forwarded Gottlieb's email to Twitter's st strategist response team, writing, please see this report from the former FDA commissioner. And it was later, the tweet was slapped with a misleading label and blocked any ability to like or share the tweet, telling Twitter users, learn why health officials recommend a vaccine for most people. There was another one, just to throw in here, another flagged tweet from Gottlieb from September 2021, uh, where Justin Hart who is a Substack writer, and he was a very extreme uh, COVID policy critic, said sticks and stones may break my bones, but a viral pathogen with a child mortality rate of approximately 0% has cost our children nearly three years of schooling. And apparently why Scott Gottlieb objected to this is not clear, but uh, the Pfizer shot would, of course, at that point soon be approved for children 5 to 11. Um, so Gottlieb, if, and if you want to go read his pathetic response to this, you should go to his Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious because he tried to turn it. They're always the victim, right? So he tried to turn it into like, well, people were being mean to me and they were they were sending tweets that said I was bad and I didn't like that. I, it's just disgusting. But um, I feel like this goes with our prior conversation that we were just having about yep. like, you, oh, you want to be healthy? You got to take this shot. Mm -hmm. And we can't have a discussion about, you know, whether it might not be right for 
every single person in the entire world, just dose them up. What could possibly go wrong? A lot could go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, and throughout this entire thing, it's always been the incentives. Like, what are people's, you should ask yourself constantly, what's this person's incentive when mm -hmm. they're asking me to do this? What's their, this person's incentive when they're censoring this speech? I mean, that should have been, whether or not you were on to vaccines and their efficacy uh, and all of that stuff from the Jump Street, you could have been paying attention to, like I was, uh, the way that they were trying to shut down some voices and elevate others, and that should be a red flag for yep. everyone. Yep. Not only in this, but other. Two things right. I want to say. Uh, in front of every, and we, we covered it here, in front of every single Wall Street quarterly report about the week before, a Pfizer CEO would come out and go, it's vaccine time, because he's got, he's, he's got to pay the piper, he's got to talk to the investors, that report's got to show an upward trend. Secondly, there's zero empirical and even less unequivocal data in history that mm -hmm. any vaccine gives you equal immunity mm -hmm. to the body's mm -hmm. natural immune system, mm -hmm. which God created. Mm -hmm. So there is substantial data that vaccines cannot hold muster right. to your natural immunity. And right. we said it day one yeah. mm -hmm. on this show. July sat here, you sat there, I sat there, and it was like, the body is still the best defense mechanism, right? right? So it's such bogus that he's the victim now and gonna go eat his feelings <laughs> and get fat and get bariatric surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, get, and get it for his kids too. Yeah. No, it's just, it's so, um, it, it's just so fascinating because, you know, on the subject of natural immunity, they cite herd immunity all the time too, as like, yeah. well, we have to achieve herd immunity by vaccinating uh, a certain percentage of the population. And if you look at the original theory, but it's a theory, herd immunity is a theory. It's not a proven uh, thing. It was always theorized based off of natural immunity, not mm -hmm. vaccine-induced mm -hmm. immunity. And yeah. so to see the medical community misuse this, this phrase and to hear them you know, talking about, well, don't tell people to take vitamin D. You can't do that. that that's not been proven. It's like, <laughs> what are you guys trying to do here? Because it, feel, it feels a whole lot like you're in it for something else. Because don't if take zinc. Right, 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 right. That, not zinc. That might hurt you. I mean, you had doctors You had doctors who were on the ground treating actual patients saying, ivermectin is working. Yep. Hydroxychloroquine for, is working. I'm seeing it work for my patients. And what happened? You had some governors banning the use of it for COVID in certain states. I mean, right. it's absolutely absurd, the red flags that were there. Um, uh, oh, by the way, I, did, I, did, I didn't see this on my notes. Uh, Gottlieb said... The selective disclosure of my private communications with Twitter stokes the threat environment. So does actions that empower people who've shown little restraint when it comes to purposeful vitriol. It instigates more menacing dialogue with potentially serious consequences. What about releasing someone's personal tax returns? What about releasing social security numbers of a president's yep. supporters? Jesus yep. Louise. Yep. Yep. Right? Yep. These guys. Absolutely right. no consistency. <laughs> None. I mean, look, th these are the people when I was in high school that you'd like to say, just come play one rugby game with us just so we can <laughs> run them over. You know, and then they can go cry. And then you laugh at the mom and the kid and go, toughen up, buddy. I, I am so over these these cotton wool little, you know, American men that are so sensitive, I know, right? I know. We I should know. point it out and go, yeah. You're weak and you know it. Yeah. And you've lied to the people and you should be in jail. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. We got to take a break. We'll be back. Your joke hurt my feelings. Only two months after losing her latest gubernatorial race, uh, Stacey Abrams said that she will likely run for office a third time because just like cockroaches, uh, bad politicians on the left never seem to go away entirely. They're never going to become extinct. Let's watch that clip. What's next? Are you going to run again? Are you going? Like, are you? Do we get to look forward to this and galvanize I, I, again? I, I will likely run again. Yeah! I don't know what, I don't know what <laughs> Oh my no. God, so are you going to go up against um, some tough men who kind of don't always play fair? E.T. go Was that a... Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And if it oh doesn't my. work, you try again. No, 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 no. We only have like 40 seconds here and I it's wish actually we had got longer. nothing to do with that. She can't do a real job. That's what it's about. Why do they have, okay. a, why do they have a mask uniform? Why is everyone wearing the same yellow mask? What? Why is everyone masked up? What? Oh my gosh! What happened to Who, the girl from ET? Where is this show? Where is this show it's, even 
It's good. Their bench is really shallow. I mean, they got to run Beto O'Rourke, they got to run no. Sabre Abrams, they got to keep running the same people over and over. Yeah, that, actually, it's a good point. That is a great point. Good like, point. cool. Go run again, Stacy. Run, Stacy. Run. Can't wait. Run, Stacy. Run. Also, run, Stacy. Run. <laughs> thank you guys so much, Daniel. Thank you, Yaku. We'll you. see you guys tomorrow.